Welcome in, peeps. Here's another episode of me watching too much TV. (laughs) But this movie that I'm going to talk about and uh, actually the subject I'm going to talk about is Can Your Faith Help You Survive? Keeping your faith through impossible circumstances, that is the core of this movie that my husband and I watched over the weekend. It's an award-winning movie called Society of the Snow. Um, If you're familiar with it, it's a true story of a rugby team that in 1972, which I was in high school then, Actually, I think I was in eighth grade going into high school, freshman in high school. I remotely remember this story, but of course we didn't have all the technology and things back then. So, you know, we would get some film footage, but it was very sparse. And um, so the news would, you know, talk about it and stuff, but we didn't have like what we have today where it's like, I mean, right now we're just had a, a bridge that collapsed from this ship crashing into it and you know, you can see it live time being crashed into, you can see, you can dissect every little thing from it. That's not how it was in 1972. And I think that's part of this story is they didn't have the technology back then. And so, um, so just talking about this crash that happened in the Andes Mountains, it was a rugby, rugby team that was stranded for 72 days in the Andes Mountains during the most coldest time of the year. It was blizzarding up there. Not It wasn't even just snow. It was beyond cold, blizzard conditions. Then on top of that, halfway through the movie, so they make this little makeshift house with what's left of the wreckage of their plane. They get hit by a major avalanche and the whole thing... <laughs> is covered in snow. They have to climb out of this avalanche. Some of, most of them survived. I think there was one more that passed away by them, but there was many people that died on impact. There was some people that lived for a little while, but these uh, 16 men that ended up surviving, watching the story of how they survived and how much faith they had and how much they clung to each other. That's what I want to talk about today is how do we keep hope alive when there is no chance of survival? So true story, 16 men uh, ended up surviving this. They, uh, they crashed this plane. They, they're doing triage for the people that were hurt. They knew that eventually these people would probably die if they didn't get help and did what they could And what I was watching throughout this movie is their faith. They had great faith, not even just in each other, but they had a a faith base. They were singing some songs that were Christian based. They were, you know, they, they believed that they would be saved. They kept trying every kind of MacGyver trick that they could to find ways to connect the radio to the outside world so that they would know, listen, we're still alive. We're here and um, please come and save us. They got as far as getting a signal of a radio station hooked up, and then they hear the news. We've called off the search because we know that with the conditions being the way they are, there will be no survivors. So I don't know about you, but (laughs) first of all, I would never, I will tell you, I love Jesus, but he would have to come down and pick me up because... I hate the cold. Like I am not, I love snow. I love looking at it from inside of a house by a hot fire. (laughs) Give me a fireplace and a hot cup of tea. I'm good. And a blanket. Like I don't want to be in the snow. I will tell you a side story. Years ago, (laughs) my husband was a fantastic skier and he would go every year with a group of guys every year. They would do this, uh, one weekend trip with the guys go skiing they'd go have fun do their little guy things and as the girls got bigger he was like oh I want to teach my girls to ski I want you to ski and I'm like yeah I don't mm, 
I'm a beach girl. Like I don't <laughs> not real. I think the snow is beautiful. I love watching the snowfall from inside of a house. Don't want to be cold. So he taught the girls to ski. I think they eat. I can't remember if both of them snowboarded, but I know one of them snowboarded. Um, and they became pretty good skiers. One year I was with my girlfriend and she's a skier. And she said, let's just go once. Let's go once. It's um, April. So it's like spring skiing, which is better because the sun is out. It's beautiful, but you can still ski. I was like, oh, okay, I'll try that. Got up there. It was beautiful. The sun was out. We actually skied in t-shirts and then our ski pants because it got so hot. We didn't need our jackets. I went on the bunny slopes. I was like, I got this. This is cool. Like, this is fun. I came home. I told my husband he was thrilled, like beyond thrilled. So much so, this is how my husband works. You don't tell my husband, don't say, I love this. He'll go get it for you. (laughs) And so I was like, we had so much fun. It was great. Whatever. That Christmas, he bought me a whole ski outfit with the skis, with, I mean, the whole getup, everything you can think of, he got for me. He's like, we are a skiing family now. (laughs) She finally got on skis. She loved it. Let's go. I was like, okay, cool. I'll try it again. Um, it's December. It's snowing outside. I skied when the sun was out and it was really pretty. It was a nice day. It wasn't freezing cold. So we go all the way up. I have my cute little, you know, bunny gear on. I'm ready to go. Let's go. I got my snow boots on. Everything's great. I get out of the car. We walked as far as to where... (laughs) the little lobby area was. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to stay here. I'm not skiing in that. I mean, the wind was whipping. I was frozen by the time we walked from the car to this little area and his face just melted. He's like, what do you mean? And I, I can't, I can't do it. So I'm watching this movie and I'm like, there's no way I I don't even, I don't think I could have enough faith to even (laughs) survive this. But it gets worse. So I will tell you if you are super sensitive or triggered easily, do not watch this movie because it's a little it's a little rough because what ends up happening is they are starving. Um, They found some food, very minimal food. They went they found the suitcases that had straggled along the way and They found a lot of cigarettes, which they smoked a lot of cigarettes. Um, They were even eating the tobacco. It was awful. And the will to survive and the hope that you have to have that somebody will come and save you is it's something to watch in this movie where you realize like how much faith do I have? How much hope do I have? that this is not the end of my life. So somewhere during the middle of the movie, they make a very, very hard decision. And I, and again, I just don't know. I don't know if I could do this, but I totally understand. Like they had to live. They were out there for over a month and now they're so weak. It's freezing. They're trying everything they can to survive. And they start talking a few of them. They said, we're we're going to have to resort to cannibalism. So basically the people that died they they have to, I can't even say it, but you can imagine. And so some of them were like, we can't do that. I just, I can't do that. And then some of them were like, we have to eat the protein because if we don't, we are definitely going to die within days. Like we have no more food. We haven't had food in a really long time. So at the, these 16 men ended up eating the protein and, um, it was rough to watch and they were, they struggled through it. The mental struggle of your faith can bring you to your knees. This is something that I, I really, when I watched this, back, you know, I'm watching this movie. I'm like, man, I, it's not even about the physical struggle. 
in that sense. It is all about the physical struggle because you're cold, you're starving, all these things. But it's the mental struggle of like, I think really having those conversations with God and saying, you know, is this how you want my life to end? Was Is this it for me? Do I give up or do I fight? And there was something in these 16 men where they were like, this is not the end. This is not, we're not going to let this be the last thing for us. And their belief got them through. And, you know, I just, I just kept thinking like, how big is our faith and how big I, I deal with people who have immense struggles. I've gone through immense struggles, especially in this last four months. And it's like you, you ask yourself and you ask God, like, how much more God, how much more? And, you know, I told someone the other day, don't ask him that. (laughs) Because, you know, there's always more. It's not, I used to think like, well, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. That's what I used to say when my son passed away. It was like, that was the worst thing that ever happened to me. I will say that's one of the top two that's ever, worst thing that's ever happened to me is like having to watch my son die in front of me was the worst thing that has ever happened to me. And that used to be my label of like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. But I don't say that anymore because after what's happened this last four months of losing three people within four months, so unexpectedly and so close together, I am like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. But I don't know. (laughs) I'm still here. There could be worse things that will happen to me. We don't know. When these people got on this plane, they never in a million years thought, we're going to, we're going to crash and be stuck in the Andes mountains for 72 days. We don't know. And so that mental struggle of just thinking, you know, what, what is my end game? Is this the end of my life or do I fight? And I think this is true in life. I just looked at it as an analogy of like, at one point in your life, do you just say, that's it. I can't do it anymore. I'm not going to have any faith in this. I'm just going to live in this struggled life forever. Cause this is, this is my label. This is my lot in life. That's it. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the story of Ruth. Naomi felt like that so much so that she changed her name to Mora, which means bitter. She was like, my life is over. I lost everything. I lost my husband. I lost all my sons. Like I'm done. I don't even don't, there was no hope in her life. There was no faith in her life. There was, there was nothing. She did have a mustard seed of faith, though, because Ruth kept that going. And so I look at that and I go, that's exactly like also in this movie, when people started to give up, their friends surrounded them and said, don't give up. And so I think about how first you go to God and you rely on this faith with him. And then he surrounds you with people who are saying, don't give up, like keep fighting. There's still more. But you have to find those friends that really support you in that way. Not in a rah, rah way, not in like, be tough, be strong, you can do this. Not like that. But people that come beside you and go, I believe in you. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to, I'm going to walk through this with you because I know there is more for you. I feel it in my gut. I feel it in my soul. Those are the friends you want next to you when you're having this struggling moment where you're like, this is the end. I don't think I can go any further. So I think sometimes we get completely smothered in our pain or our situation, not being able to breathe, not having hope. And, um, and I coach people like that. And what I want to give them is that you can do this kind of hope. You've got this God still sees you. He's still with you through the pain. Don't give up. And because these men didn't give up for 72 days, they even got a radio kind of attached where they were doing an SOS and they didn't know if it went out or not. But people from, not from the original search crew, but another group of people said, we are going to go out and look for them again, even if, you know, you guys think there's no survivors. And in the end, they saw them. 
And it was heartbreaking. Like Mike and I were just like, oh, crying. It's like the, these poor men were just, they were at the end of their rope at that point. There wasn't a lot more that they could do to survive. They needed, they needed a miracle. We all have the ability to survive. We just need to decide if we want to, if we have the will. Any situation that we're going through, it's not like it's going to be wrapped up in an hour and 20 minutes, the, the uh, amount of that movie or two hours, you know. Sometimes we walk through things for years and years and years and it gets tiring and grueling. But if you only look at that circumstance as hopeless, then I don't think that you can come out of that circumstance ever. I think you're just going to keep circling the drain of that same thing. So I say, yes, you have this set of circumstances. You have this hard struggle. You have this impossible thing that is in your life. But is there a way where you can wake up every morning and still have hope and still have love and still have peace in some little nugget of your life? Not that it's going to fix anything completely in the moment, but our mindset and our faith is something that we can look to and control to some degree to say, okay, let's just keep digging through this. Let's just keep, you know, finding other solutions. Let's, let's not give up hope because when you give up hope, You've given the enemy a complete tie to, oh, okay, well, let's just make it worse and worse because she has no hope. So this is easy. We can just keep her down on that depressing path. And then she doesn't have to have any kind of joy in her life. Because honestly, I will say, I don't care what is going on in your life. There is always room for joy and hope. Always. In the middle of all of this chaos that was going on during the holidays with losing these family members, every time I was just in this depressive state, God, I I call them God kisses. He would just throw something in where it was like, that was so sweet. And it would just fill my heart with such warmth and such joy where I was like, yeah, that's a God kiss right there. Like he's telling me, don't give up. It's okay. It's going to be fine. Yes, you are going to struggle and suffer during this time. It's not about erasing what you're going through. It's not about saying it doesn't exist. It's about really honing in on how much willpower do you have to say, I am going to get up the next day. Even in the middle of all this mess, I'm going to get up and I'm going to try to find a little nugget of something good because life is still good. Life still goes on and we are going to get through this not rush through it, but we're going to get through it. So a couple of points to just have you guys thinking a little bit before we close out this um, episode. When things seem impossible, look for the possible. You might be surprised at how strong you can be. Do you have faith when things go sideways? It's easy to have faith to wake up and thank God for your beautiful life, but it's a whole nother story when your life is imploding. Can you depend on friends to support you? Some of that strength comes in the form of friends constantly reaching out, holding your broken, hopeless heart well. And they won't have the answers, but they can walk beside you and hold you up. And that's what these men did for each other. And it was beautiful to watch. Don't be afraid to pray for a miracle. I think that's super important. Never give up on the miracles because God can do them. Ultimately, it is God's will, but he doesn't mind us asking. We will accept the pain he gives us, even if it's not the way we wanted it. We don't see what's going on. He sees and he knows. Just keep trusting. And there's one last thing that I want to leave with you is We have a choice to live fully alive and trust God that he loves us and he wants the best for us. Or we can feel defeated every day. The choice is up to us to live it out. 
and I pray that you pick the first choice. I know I will, always. So that is the end of our episode for today. Leave any comments. Let me know how you liked this episode. Um, I hope you guys have a joyful day in the midst of this crazy life. (laughs) And until next time, I'll see you later, peeps. Mm -hmm.